Welcome back to Tied Up with the Morgans. Today I'm going to show you how I collect and prepare shag bark hickory seeds to grow trees from. The nice thing is you really don't need anything special. Like this is great if you're trying to collect a whole bunch of acorns or different nuts, right? There's different sizes. This is a medium size and I have a smaller sized. Um, but you don't really need that. Uh, you don't need it at all for anything. But if you're trying to collect thousands, sometimes that helps. Whereas with the shag bark hickories, I prefer to just use my hands. Um, and that's just because you each nut is going to have four of the four husks, four pieces of a husk, right? The shell that it's in. And so if you're using the nut gatherer rolling over, you're going to be collecting a lot of that that you're going to have to then clean out. So I like to just use my hands. Uh, you need a five gallon bucket or if you, you have a cat, I don't have a cat, but if you know someone that has a cat, you can get this from them. These things are great. You can reuse them. Um, and here I forget. Okay. Yeah. Here's some red oak acorns I collected the other day. Um, so yeah, that's great. Uh, you just really need a bucket, something to put them in. Uh, and yeah, I don't like using, uh, any like Ziplocs cause I just want it to breathe. If you do make sure it can breathe. Paper bags work great. Um, they work better than Ziplocs in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you where they are. We're collecting them and then I'll show you what we do next. All right. We're over here at the shag bark hickories. And you can see the leaves are really falling already. But you just start to collect these as they fall. If they can focus. And get a whole bunch of them. If you look out here, there are a whole bunch. There's a squirrel right over there. So I'm competing against the squirrels and the chipmunks. But you collect these. You can see the white everywhere. These nuts are all over the place, okay? So you need to then soak those nuts for four days. Every 24 hours, changing the water, giving it fresh new water. Uh, I've read this in the Woody Plant Seed Manual, I believe is what it's called. Uh, I'll include a link in the description. It is a giant book. I have the paperback of it. It's giant, and it'll tell you how to grow any woody plant. So here we just added these to water. There is a whole bunch sinking on the bottom. And these ones we'll talk about in just a minute. But these ones we just added, Ty was stirring it around. That's why it's uh, shaking like that. So we just added water. There's a lot sinking already. So what we'll do is let this sit for 24 hours. And then tomorrow we will drain the water and we'll add fresh water. And we do that for four whole days. This batch, there's about 150 in here just finished its soak of four days so now what we're going to do is add a little peat moss to this bucket they're kind of wet enough already actually just right you don't want it to be soaking wet at all you don't really want like you can tell and we'll get to that but anyways we will add some peat moss and that will absorb some of the water and retain the moisture keeping these from drying out so we'll then have this i'm going to add peat moss mix it all up in here and then put that in a five, or I put it in a one gallon Ziploc bag with holes in it. And I will then stratify these in the fridge for 120 days. So you can do that in the fridge or you can do it outside. Uh, I prefer to do it in the fridge only because I don't have the bed space available right now. My trees aren't dormant yet, so I can't pull all of the beds out of, or all of the trees out of the beds. So I'll use the fridge and I also have some bed space available, but that kind of goes for anything in the white oak group because those are going to be growing their radical right now. So it's going to get that little root coming out of the acorn. So I leave that space for any of the white oak group trees, uh, swamp, white oak, white oak, chinkapin. Um, yeah. Uh, burr oak, chestnut oak, all of those will be going into my beds now. Whereas the other things I just be putting in my seed fridge. I have a fridge dedicated to just seeds uh, and I overwinter them in the fridge. The other nice thing about doing in the fridge, you don't have to worry about any rodents, squirrels, chipmunks, mice getting to the nuts. So I prefer to do in the fridge, but the reason it goes in the fridge, you just have to recreate a winter, a moist, cold stratification period in order for these nuts to germinate. So they need to go through that period to germinate. 
All right, I have added some peat moss to the hickory nuts and I got it moist, but not too wet. Uh, some people will mix this with like perlite or vermiculite um, or even like a sand. I have only ever used just peat moss when I am doing an artificial stratification, which is in the fridge. And I have had good luck with this, so I just keep using it this way. Uh, it helps too to not get mold. I know some people will say just put it in a in a uh, Ziploc bag or add a wet paper towel. That's a really common thing. Everyone says just to use a damp paper towel and that's all you need. It's much faster to do it that way, but I have seen that uh, that brings and invites mold more, which you don't want. Um, and it seems like the peat moss, I believe uh, has some properties that are, I don't know the word I'm looking for right now, but uh, deter mold, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It prevents mold. Uh, I really have a way with words if you haven't been able to tell yet from watching my videos. I then just write the date that it went in the fridge and the Latin and common name just for some order. And these will now go in this bag. I then will poke holes in the bag. Okay, it's all bagged up. I use a spray bottle. I keep one of these on hand and I will give it a little spritz just to add some water, not even water, just to add a little bit of moisture to it. What I do over winter is I check every couple, you know, every two to three weeks, I would say, check in on all of the bags, make sure there's no mold, make sure nothing's drying out or make sure it's not too moist. And that's pretty much it. That's really the only maintenance you need over winter is just check in on it every once in a while and, you know, make sure there's no mold, make sure it's not dry or that it's not too moist. So that's the preparation of the shagbark hickory seeds. We now await 120 days. Once those come out of the fridge, I will plant them in one of my air prune beds and I plant them one to two inches deep. Keep it moist and it will germinate. And you can also do that now instead of using the fridge. You can plant them now. You just need hardware cloth or something like this to protect them. Uh, a couple years ago, when I first got into air prune beds, I believe it was two years ago now, two or three years ago, been growing trees for four. So uh, this will be my fifth year coming up. And I think the first time, I think it was three years ago now, I built an air prune bed and I used chicken wire because I had seen a lot of guys online do that. They use chicken wire. Well, chipmunks can fit through chicken wire. Didn't realize it. So they got in and, and killed and ate thousands of seeds. So that was devastating. And uh, I learned my lesson. So I think some of those guys that I had talked to, actually, I, I asked them, how are you not having, some guys don't even have the protection like this and they have cats. So that's it. That's it. I don't want any cats though. I'm allergic for one and I don't want to throw things out of balance here and wipe out the squirrels, the chipmunks, you know, we got a good thriving ecosystem over here. I don't want to change that. That's just me. So yeah, keep that in mind. You can plant now, but you're gonna need rodent protection. All right, we're out here in the front yard on an umbrella. Just been, it's been raining most of the day. Not hard at all. Working on a lot of things. Gonna show you that here. Probably in the next video, we'll see what we've been working on. Build a new chicken coop. So that's it, it's not a surprise. But anyways, I wanna show you what I think is the best resource and the best source of information on how to grow trees. The Woody Plant Seed Manual. This is the Agricultural Handbook 727 from the USDA. And it is a thick one. You know, almost 1,200 pages of goodness. So let's take a look at this. There is a lot to this book, as you can tell. 1,200 pages of pure information on how to collect, store, whether you have a nursery, if it's small scale, whatever, it has it all. All sources are cited. There really isn't a better resource, how to store your seeds. But let's take a look here. All right, we're in the seas, so we're looking for caria. 
cornice. We got the dogwoods there. You'd think I would have had this marked. This is probably really boring. Okay, so we made it to the carrier section of this book. You'll see it goes into growth habit, occurrence use for the flowering and the fruiting. It's very interesting. Talk about the collection and extraction, storage. Shows you the whole seed, every part of it. And then like what I found was really interesting, Cariovada, the shagbark hickory. The first year it was cultivated was 1911, which is not that long ago when you look at some of these were in the 16, 1700s. We know from my hickory video that this is correct. It'll bear seed at 40 years old. And then it shows all these different tests that they've done. So it's it's very in-depth here and it talk about different mediums to use, you know, sand, peat, soil, it depends on the species, right? But, and these are all the germination tests. Anyways, nursery practices, what nurseries do, you know, if you're doing uh, high volume, I guess. Uh, germination tests. Anyways, this book, I'm telling you, it, it has this for anything you have interest in, right? So it is just a monstrous book that I can't recommend enough. And let's talk about this book just a little more. I want to tell you something really cool. This book is free. You can get it online. The PDF is free and you can even get the hard copy free. I'll include a link to both. Uh, the first link is the PDF. The second link will be how to request this hard copy, this paperback for free. I highly recommend it if you wanna grow trees, this is gonna tell you how to do it. That's all we have for today though. So I think we're gonna end it there. I hope this was useful. I didn't really know where we were gonna go with it. I knew I wanted to show you how to prepare the shagbark hickory seeds uh, to, for stratification and then help them to germinate in the spring. But I realized I need to show you this book because that's where I'm learning all of this on how to grow these trees is from this and a few other uh, books. I have a, a mountain of books. Maybe one day we'll go through uh, the mountain of books I reference and uh, dive into a little bit. So that's all we got. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you haven't, I keep mentioning it, please watch my video on the shagbark hickory.